Let's build an example that uses all the things we've been talking about. And let's use a new API. I'm, I'm getting tired of the recres.in API. And I want to use something that's real world and pretty neat to be able to use. And that's the GitHub API. GitHub API is an API, a REST API that lets you work with repository information, user information, any anything that's on GitHub, you can uh, get access to it. So let's try building something that uses it. And I want to try using the uh, React router. I want to use some third-party components. I want to use Bootstrap, uh, React Bootstrap. And I want to show you how to do some interesting data handling using um, the SWR React hook. So let, let's dive in. So because I'm going to use a number of third-party components, the first thing I have to do is I have to install them. So if you look at the installation instructions for React Bootstrap, it says to install this, you need to install two things. You need to install Bootstrap and you need to install React Bootstrap. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to install npm install and I'm going to save this as one of my dependencies. Uh, Bootstrap and React Bootstrap. I'm also going to use the router. React router, so let's pull that in, React router DOM. And I'm going to use this library SWR for doing data handling, SWR. So I'm going to install those different dependencies and that'll grind away for a while. So while that's happening, let's, uh, let's actually start building the app. So I'll switch views and we can jump into writing some code. Okay, so the, the first change that we need to make to our app is if we look back at the notes here, maybe it might be the easiest way to remember, is I need to wrap my app in a, a router. So I have at the highest level of my app, I wanna control how my components are shown by, uh, by means of having a, um, a browser router in the top here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, import the browser router from React Router DOM, like so. And, and then I'm gonna wrap my app in the browser router, like so. Okay, so my whole app is gonna have access to the environment that's managed by the browser router. Still installing. That's gonna take some time, so we let it spin. Okay, so now the next thing that I need to think about is I need to think about all the routes that I want to create. All right, so let's, let's, let's think about this. So in my app, I have a very basic app here, and what I wanna do is I want to be able to, uh, I wanna be able to render what? A home page, an about page, and I wanna be able to show information about a user on GitHub and also that user's, uh, that user's repositories. So let's do the following. Let's, um, let's start by getting rid of this and let's use, again, looking at the notes we have here, let's use a switch. So remember how a switch works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna import switch and uh, route, capital route from React Router DOM, like so. And I'm at the highest level of my app, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this switch. So I'm gonna return a switch Inside my switch, I'm gonna have a series of routes. So I'm gonna have a route for um, a path about, and the about path, I want it to be an exact match. So when you do slash about, it, that's it. I don't, there's nothing else after it. So if you do about, then I'm gonna render an about page. So I better create an about page, new file, about.js and export default function about. And for now, we'll just say uh, h1 about. 
like that. So we have a very basic about page. So that means that in my app, I'll pull in the about component and I will render it like so. So that's the basics of doing a basics of doing a um, a route. We just have to give it a path, specify whether it's exact or not, and then we list the component as a child of that route. Another route that I know that I need is I need a route for the home. Okay, so home, and let's have a home component. So I'm, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to need to create a home component and include it here. And I also want to do two others, and I'm going to do them in the middle here. So one of them, this one will be a path for uh, users. And if you give me a username, I want to have a username be a parameter. So I'd love to be able to take, somebody puts their GitHub username after users, and I want to be able to render a users component that makes use of it, or let's just call it user, because I'm only going to show one user. And I want to be able to show the, um, the repositories that a user owns. So I'm going to make another route, which is going to be users slash colon username slash repos. And this will be the repos component. So think about how this works. When I say about, it's an exact match. And what I'm saying here is if you give me about, I'll give you the about component. That's what the switch is going to do. This one says, if you go to slash users, and then anything after that is going to be the, is going to be considered the username. So this can be anything. And then after that, you have repos. I'm going to give you the repos component. However, if you don't have the repos component, so if you're missing this part here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the user component. And finally, anything else will cause the, uh, the home to be home to be rendered, okay? So this is basically done. Like my app is at the highest level. I've made two major changes from what we usually do. I've included a browser router and I've wrapped the app in the browser router. Now underneath that, the browser router is gonna manage the URL and it's going to figure out what needs to be shown. And it's going to do that by using this switch. And the switch is going to figure out which of these four routes need to be displayed at, the, at a given time. So let's import repos from repos. And let's import user from user. So let's just create these other files. So I have home, I need home. For now, we're not going to do anything fancy. I need user, and it's basically going to be the same as this, but I will call it uh, user, and let's say user, like that. And I need repos, and it's going to be the same except for the title will be repos like so. So now we have the beginnings of our, of our app. So how are we doing over here? Still installing. So, <laughs> oh man, pulls down so much data. Okay, well, let's keep going. We can keep writing code while we, while we work. Um, so why don't we start out with the home? The, the one thing that I'm gonna wanna do in all of these components is I'm going to want to use I'm going to want to use pieces of React Bootstrap. So when I'm building this thing, I don't want to have to write all the CSS and everything. Instead, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to do stuff like this. 
I want to be able to import a button or an alert or a container or any of the components. There's all kinds of components that we'll look at in a minute. I want to pull these in as React components and I want to be able to work with them. The one thing that you have to do before this will work is you have to pull in a CSS style sheet. So this has to be included at the highest level of your code because it's going to be used like all the way through the whole app. So I'm going to import a global style sheet. I can just copy this line here like so. And we can import this like let's say here inside. Um, I'm going to import it here. I'm actually going to put all my CSS together. So I'm going to have my components and I'm also going to separate. I'm going to tend to separate the components that I don't own, like the modules that are, um, you know, things I've gotten from NPM. I'm going to separate that from the components that are mine, and I'm going to separate that from my CSS. And a lot of developers will do something like this where they visually separate it, just so you can quickly look at this and you know what's going on here. So I'm pulling in this global style sheet, bootstrap, disk, CSS, and so on. It's going to pull it out of the node modules folder. So when it goes to load it, it'll look inside node modules, bootstrap, disk, CSS, and it'll pull in the style sheet like so. So I need that in order for the rest of what I'm going to do to work. Okay, so now we could go on to the home page. So our home page, let's, uh, let's do a couple of things here. Essentially what I'd like to do on the home page, let's write it the way we would normally write it. And then I'll show you how I would convert it to use the techniques that we're working with today. So step one, you know, you have a title. Step two, I might want to have a bunch of links. So I have a link and I say a href equals um, users. And I'm just going to put up a, a couple of links to various users. So SICT web is where all of the notes are on GitHub for this course and the other web courses. And I'm going to do another one for ahref equals uh, users Seneca C dot. So this is where all of the uh, Seneca center for development of open technology. So a lot of our research repositories at Seneca are here. And I'll just do my GitHub as well. So I have like a, a regular user. href equals users Humpty, like so. Now you can see that uh, a couple of things are going on here. Number one, I'm getting an error from React. So this is a common one that you're going to run into. It says you need to have one parent element. So you always need to return a single thing. So I have a couple of options. One thing I can do is I could return a div like this, and I could just wrap everything in a div and then bump it all in like that. So now I'm really like, if you think about it, I'm just returning a single div, right? It's a whole tree of things, but it's one div. React also gives you a way to do, you'll see people do this. And so basically this is like a way of saying, I want to put something into the DOM, but I don't want to insert a div. I just want to like have this fragment of text. I need to wrap it in something. So it gives you this sort of weird empty element. So sometimes you'll see people doing that and that's what that that's what that's all about. Okay, now we said that we can't use regular links for this to work. Like if you look at how our app is set up, I have a path that says my route is slash users colon username. And username can be any username that I want to show. Okay, well, I can't actually, in my home page, I can't use ahref to do this because that will cause the browser to reload the page. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to import the link component from React router DOM, like so. And down here, I'm going to make a modification. So I'm going to say link. And instead of saying href, I'm going to say two equals like that. OK, so same thing here, link two equals. And this will be the same thing here, link two equals. So I'm going to create the illusion that you can click on these links and that they're they're real, but actually 
This is going to be a closing link. This is going to be a closing link. And this is going to be a closing link. Like so. OK, so that looks good. I have my routing working. But I, I mean, I'm still using the old style of um, building this up. And I'd love to start using more of the code from I'd love to start using more of the code from React Bootstrap. So the way that you use the components in React Bootstrap is you, there's all these different components here that we can work with. Like at the most basic level, the, the top one that people use are containers. And a container, it, it'll automatically center all of your content for you and it's responsive. So as you change the size of the window, it will do what you want it to do. It, it'll, it'll respond to different widths. It's really nice to be able to use containers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a container from React Bootstrap. And then instead of doing this, I'm going to say create a container and wrap all of this inside of a container like that. Okay, so this has worked. You can see it's finished down here. So I'm gonna start it up, npm start. And we can start coding this thing live. Okay, so my page loads. Ideally, this should load the home page because let's see what it does here if it compiles. Okay, so here we are on the home page. And you can see that I'm inside a container, so it's automatically given me extra space on the left and right. I automatically have these links. So this is looking pretty good. Now, one thing I would love to do is I'd love to put some navigation across the top. I'd love to, at the top, I'd love to have ways to click on home, about, etc., so that we can jump back and forth. And so again, we can go and look at the list of components and there are components like navs. So you can see like, here's the kind of thing that I wanna produce. I wanna have something across the top where I have a nav and then I have nav.item, nav.link, et cetera. So let's do that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import the nav component. And whenever I'm doing React Bootstrap or any of these other libraries, I always have the docs open and they always have examples and they show you how you're supposed to do this. And you're just like, Nobody memorizes this stuff. You just have to go look it up all the time. So you tend to have, you know, like when I'm doing this, um, I have the docs open. Okay, so we have a nav. And inside the nav, we're going to place uh, a bunch of things. So what would I like in here? I would like an, a nav item, nav.item. And inside nav.item, I want a nav.link. Now, um, the way that nav.link is, you say href equals whatever, and it will render it as a link. But the problem is I don't wanna render it as a normal link. So one of the things you can do, I don't know if it documents it here or not. Um, yeah, you'll see that a lot of times these link components that you'll have in React, they'll give you the ability to specify what kind of a component you wanna render it as. So for me, what I want to do is I want to be able to render it as a link. Um, so I'm going to say nav.item, render it as a React router DOM link. So I'm going to say as equals link. So render it as a link rather than the way that it was being done. And then I'm going to give it the two parameter and I'll say two equals this, and this will be home. And I'm going to do the same thing for about like that. And I'll say slash about like so. Okay, so let's see how this looks. So this is good. Across the top, I have these two links going on like this, and then it goes down below. So if I go to the about page, you can see that it has routed me to slash about. If I click on back, takes me back and I'm here. Now it would be nice if on the about page, um, the about page, if it could use the same navigation across the top that we just had. 
So what I might do is I might take the navigation that I just wrote right here, and I might pull it out into a separate component. So let's do the following. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna make a new component called navigation. And I'm going to essentially just make a, a component called navigation that returns the nav like that. And what this is gonna allow me to do Oops. Um, yeah, there we go. And I need to import link from the React router, like so. So now I have a reusable component, the navigation component, so that on the home page, I can import navigation from navigation. And instead of doing all this, I can just render the navigation component right here, like so. And now it's complaining. It's telling me that I have a component that I'm not using, the nav component, because I no longer use it here. So I'm going to delete it from the list of things that I import, like that. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna get rid of home. I'm just gonna have a list of links. So I have a list of links, very basic home page. You know, here's all of the, the pieces that I want to um, let the user click on. And I'm going to, um, one of the things that Bootstrap has that I wanna make use of is they have a bunch of utilities for CSS um, for margins and so on. So you can, they have these classes that are already built. So you can do things like margin Y would do top and bottom or margin top or margin bottom. And then you can do, um, you know, varying amounts of sizes. So like, for example, you could say margin top zero or um, padding on the X to etc. So I can use that inside here because I've pulled in the bootstrap CSS, I can use any of the bootstrap CSS that I want inside of this. So like for my navigation, for example, I could say something like um, class name equals margin y5 as an example. And if I go back here, it should push this down a bit. Still compiling. Yeah, so it it just opens up some more space. So I have some more space on top. I'm not gonna mess around with CSS too much because that's not the focus of what I wanna do here. We could do tons of extra styling on this if we wanted to, but for me, this is good enough. So I wanna use the same navigation component. If you look at the way home is structured, I wanna do something very similar on the about page. So on the about page, I'm going to do something like this. I'm gonna pull in the container. I'm gonna pull in navigation. And then I wanna do something like this. So I wanna return a container navigation. And then uh, let's just do paragraph about. and save that. Okay, so now I have a home page, And if I go to the about page, the about page looks like this. If I go to the home page, it looks like this. So you see that I can route my way back and forth and I can even just type in the URL. If I say slash about and press enter, it works. It loads the app and it's routing between those different, those different pages, those different components. 
Okay, so let's start doing some of these other ones. Let's do this one right here where we grab the, um, we get the user info. Okay, so for a user, let's start out by doing something pretty similar. I'm just gonna grab the same as my about page and user is gonna look pretty similar. I'm gonna call this user like that. And okay, so inside my user, I, the first thing I wanna be able to do is I wanna figure out which user you are requesting. So if you look at the way app works, I'm expecting to receive a username here. So I need to get that username. And there's a really cool way that um, you can do this with React Router DOM. So as you recall, in our index, we wrapped the entire app in a browser router. So that means that deep, deep down in our tree, all the components have access to some interesting aspects of the browser router, which I'm gonna use right now. So I'm gonna import uh, a hook called use params from React Router DOM. And I'm gonna use it right here. So I'm gonna say const username equals use params. And I'll just print it out, console.log username, like that. And um, for the user, I'll just, maybe I'll just print the username here too, so you can see it. So the way that this is functioning is I'm calling this function here and it's gonna reach into the URL logic. It's gonna go to the router so like there's sort of hooks are a little magical because I'm actually able to interact with the, the browser router that sits above me in the DOM tree. I don't have to receive everything on props. So another way to do this would be to pass props all the way down from the app, down through the pages and all the way down. But another way to do it is to use these hooks, which let me just do it at any level that I want and I'm gonna extract the username from, uh, from this. Let me show you if it's working or not. So if we go here, if I click on this user, you'll see that I have that username and it's appearing here and you can see that I have it in the console. If I go back home, if I click here, I get that username. If I click here, I get that username. If I do ABC, uh, I'm gonna get ABC. So I can actually make this work for any user. So my app, there's no server here, it's all happening in the browser and I'm able to control the way that the app renders based on having these, these URLs. So step one is to use the hook, hook to get the username from the URL via the browser router. Okay, so let's think about the next problem that we have to solve. The next thing that I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to get information for the current user from GitHub. So if you go and look at the GitHub API, we wanna be able to look up users. And so they have, you know, for example, get a user. So if you wanna get a user, you have to do slash users slash username, and it will return to you. You pass it a username and it'll give you an object that looks like this, which has all the information about a user. So let's try it out. So I need to be able to um, call into the GitHub API when this component renders. So if you think about what that means, I'm gonna need another hook. I'm gonna have to import the use effect and also eventually use state hooks from React. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna say use effect and I wanna run this function, and I wanna run this function every time that the username changes. So it's depend, in other words, there's a dependency on the username. Okay, so what are we gonna do inside here? We're gonna do a fetch, and we're gonna to go to https api.github.com, and then we're gonna pass in slash users slash username. So slash users, now I need the username. So let's make this, let's change this so that I can insert it, slash username, like that. 
So whenever you have an effect, if the effect is reaching out to data that's been defined in props or in state or from a hook, you typically need to put that in as a dependency here so that React knows when you want to rerun that. If this data ever changes, then we need to be able to rerun this. So we're gonna fetch that. And then what do we do? We get back a response and um, we check if the response is not okay, then we're gonna throw a new error, uh, unable to get user info from GitHub, like so. However, if it does work, then I'm going to return the response.json call, and in the next then, I'll get the result back, and now I can use that result. So for now, let's just console log it, like that, and if there's an error, let's console uh, log the error like that. So we go over here, we wait, uh, let's do Humpty, this is my user account. Okay, this is great. So I have all of the information for my account, my username, my URL, my bio, uh, link to my blog, et cetera, et cetera. All kinds of information from GitHub is here and I now need to render this on the page. Okay, so let's think about how we wanna render this. So in uh, React Bootstrap, one of the ways for rendering something like this is to use a card. So a card is essentially like, I wanna have a picture, I wanna have a title, I wanna have some text, I wanna have a button, I wanna have something like this. And there's lots of examples. If you scroll through, they'll show you how you can do, like you could put links at the bottom. I don't know, there's all different examples of ways to use this. And what's great is they give you all of the code. You can have a header and a footer, um, lots of cool stuff that we can do here. So let's try this out. Let's just take a look at like one of these. Let's, let's try and render out a, a card. So I'm gonna have to pull in the card from React Bootstrap. And then down here, I can um, start building this card. So let's do this. So I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put this in another container and inside this container, I'm gonna stick my card. Okay, so what do I need? The first thing I want is an image. So um, I'm gonna say card dot uh, image and you can say where you want it to be. Variant top means put it at the top, variant mod bottom would be the bottom. So I'm gonna say variant equals top. So these are props. Right, Just like when we make our components, we can pass data into them as, these are like variables that you're passing in as arguments to a function. So I'm gonna say, put it at the top. Now it needs a source, source equals. And so I now need to use the um, data that comes back from, I need this right here. I need the avatar URL that comes back from GitHub. So that means I need a little piece of state over here, which I haven't made use of yet. So let's do that. So step two is I need to keep track of the user. So this is user state. Equals use state. By default, it's null. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is whenever the result comes in, I'm going to set user to be the result like that. So now I have access to the user when this, um, when this comes around, like when this works. And we could do the same thing we did, we did in a previous video. We could have a loading state and set loading. Um, we could say equals use state false. And when we begin loading, set loading is true. And when we finish, after everything's done, 
we can set loading to false, like so. So that lets us say something like if loading, then we can display um, some kind of a spinner. So for example, like um, there are spinners in React, sorry, sp spinners in React Bootstrap. So there's all different ones that you can use that are already pre-programmed, different sizes. You can put them in buttons. Uh, and there's lots of different things that you can do with them. So the most basic thing would be for me to say spinner and just to take this code and say, if it's loading, then let's just, let's throw in a spinner. So I'm going to, whoops, I'm gonna return a spinner like that so that it displays it that way. And then I'm gonna make a check. I'm just gonna make sure that I have a user. So if I don't have a user, then I can't use the data. So I will return nothing. And if I have a user, then I'll continue on and I'll do my card. So let's go back here to the cards. Okay, so my card needs a source. So I'm gonna use the data that comes back from GitHub, avatar URL is what I want. So I'm gonna say user.avatar URL, like so. And I'll close this. And let's just try that. Okay, so there's me, only this is bigger than I want it to be, it's too wide. So let's do what the card does. Let's change the width. So you can pass in styling information here to React Bootstrap by passing an object. So that's what I'm gonna do as well. So I'll set it equal to like, I don't know, 400 pixels or something. So I'll say my card style equals width 400 pixels. So it's very common, lots of uh, React frame, uh, UI frameworks will let you do styles by passing an object. And I'm just defining like CSS, but using JavaScript style. So this is often called uh, CSS and JS. So I'm gonna limit the width of this so that it's only 400 wide. So that's better, that's, that's closer to what I want. Okay, so what else can we do with a card? So a card can have a title. So let's give our card a title card.title, and for our title, let's do um, the user's name, and let's also make a link, an external link, ahref, to their, um, to their GitHub uh, URL. So the data that comes back from GitHub includes a whole bunch of URLs, and the one that I want is this one right here, the HTML URL. So I want to use um, the HTML URL. And then I want like the username or the login name. So here I would say like um, at and user.login like that. I think that should work. So now, yeah, so I have a title that goes across like this and um, that's looking pretty good. It looks like they put all of this inside of a card body. So I think I should probably do the same. So I'm just gonna follow along with what they do, card.body. And then all of this stuff can go into the body. like that, and then that should, yeah, so that just bumps it down a little bit, puts it in, and this, if I open this up, should link to the user's account, and it does. So that's great, that's working. Okay, so let's keep going. What else can you do with a card? Card can have an image, it can have a body, it can have a title, it can have text. Okay, so in the text, Let's put the user bio. Um, 
So this is looking good. Now this will work for all of our accounts. If I go back home and I do the Seneca SIT web, it works. If I go home and I go to CDOT, it works for CDOT. If I go home and I do it for me, it works for me. And it would work if I put in any GitHub URL would work in here. Any username rather would work in here. Um, okay, the last thing that I think that I need is I need a link at the bottom. Let me see if I can show you an example of what I want, like this. I want a link at the bottom to get my repositories. For, so who, when I see a user, I wanna be able to get to their repositories. So they're doing that with a card link. So let's do the same thing here for us. So I'm gonna say card.link, and I've got the same problem that I had before with the navigation. Um, I need to use a special component. I need to use the link component from the React Router DOM. I want this rendered using my router, not using a regular link. So I'm gonna tell it to render as a link. And how did I know you could do this? If you just look up as equals, you'll see that you can specify which element type to use here, as equals this, whoops, that's not what I want. And probably it's listed at the bottom too. If you look at the props at the bottom, here it is here. So it says if you specify the as, you can tell it which element type to use. So that's why this works. Render this thing as a link. And let's say that I want my link to go to, um, let's build the URL. I wanna go to users slash the username of this user, username. And then I wanna to go to repos, uh, slash repos like this. And the uh, text will for this will be repositories. So just so it's clear what I'm doing here, there it is right there. In the app, I have a route for users colon username. And I also have a route for users colon username slash repos. So if I wanna see the repositories for this user, then I wanna click on repositories and I wanna be able to go to, I wanna be able to go to that set of repos. And I wanna do it for whichever one. So if I click on repos here, you'll see that it's working. It's routed me to users slash humph d slash repos. If I go back to the top here, if I go SICT web and I click on repositories, it takes me to users, SICT web repos, like so. Perfect, that's that's looking good. Um, okay, so let's, let's do the repos. So the repos is very similar to the way that I, I've just done my user. And essentially I need to pull in a bunch of data and then render that data, do a loading, et cetera. So I'm just gonna copy all this code and I'm gonna do it in repos. And in a minute, I'm gonna refactor this. Like as soon as you see yourself copying and pasting code, it probably means that you need to build components that can be reused. And so that's really what I need to do too. I don't wanna keep copying and pasting code everywhere if I can make something that I can reuse. So for repos, let's think about what we need. We need to get the username. So we already have code to do that. Instead of keeping track of a user, what I'm gonna do with the GitHub API is I wanna look for uh, repositories. I wanna list all repositories for a user. So probably that's under repositories and I want to list repository for a user, list repositories for a user. So the way to do that is you do slash username slash repos. Okay, so the thing I'm gonna get back is not going to be a object, it's gonna be an array of objects. It's gonna be an array of repository objects. So instead of getting back a user, I'm gonna get back repos, and I'm gonna say set repos. And so I'm gonna set the state for this to be an empty array, but the rest of it can basically be the same. 
I need to modify what I'm calling so that instead of just saying API, API github.com slash user slash username, I wanna say slash repos. And I can also specify some parameters like the number of items to show per page. So if I were to say per page equals 100, I could you know get 100 at one time. Okay, so unable to get uh, repos, repo info from GitHub. And I need to change this to set repos instead of set user. But the rest of it is basically the same. I have a loading spinner, so that's all, that's fine. That looks good. And I wanna say if I don't have any repos, then uh, return null. But if I do have repos, then I want to display all of the repository information. So let's get rid of all this. I'm not gonna do this. And instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna console.log the repos so you can see what it would look like. Okay, so if I go home Let's clear this. If I go to SICT web and I click on repositories, you'll see that it's loaded an array with 12 items. Each one of these items, these objects, has all kinds of information about the repository. So it has, for example, the full name of the repository. It has an HTML URL for the repository. It has an ID. It has what language it's written in, uh, the license, the owner, the size of it, just tons and tons of information here that we can, uh, we can work with. So this data would actually be really good to represent as a table. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the React Bootstrap code to create a table. And I wanna do something like this, where I have a, a set of headings and then I have all of my data. So I need to pull in the table component. So let's do that. So instead of a card, I'm gonna pull in the React Bootstrap table component. And I'm gonna start building a table. So what does a table look like? So a table, um, you can specify a number of properties on it. So for example, you can say, do you want the table to be striped? Like, do you wanna go dark, light, dark, light? You can put a border on it. You can make it so that it lights up when you hover. So I'm gonna say table striped and bordered. And I don't think I'll do the hover. So now I have a table and inside the table, I'm gonna do a table head. And in the table head, I'll do one row. And inside the row, I'm gonna have my columns. So TH, my first column, Let's do um, the name of the repository. Second column, let's do the description of the repository. Third column, let's say the language that this repository is in. So I'll save this and let's see what it looks like. So here we have our table. We have across the top, we have name, uh, name, description, language, but we haven't got any data, obviously. So we've got to now translate all of this into rows in the table. So we're back to the same problem we've seen in the past, which is we have a whole bunch of elements. We have to repeat those elements in the page. So let's do that. Let's write a little bit of code where we say that after the head comes the table body. And inside the body, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna map all of the repositories into table rows. So if you think about what I have to build here, I'm gonna say, take the repositories, map it. And so I wanna get the first repo. And what I wanna do is I wanna return, I wanna return a table row. And remember that whenever you map, you always need a key. So I'm gonna say key is equal to, React needs a unique identifier. And you'll notice that every one of these repos somewhere in here has an ID. So here's the ID. So there's already a unique ID in here. So I'm just gonna use it. So I'm gonna say repo.id like so. So now I have a table row 
and I'm gonna do a column table cell for uh, each one of these things. So the first thing I need is the repo uh, name, like that. Second one would be the uh, repos description. And the third one would be the uh, repo.language. Like that. So there we go. So we've got a table. We've got repeating rows all the way down. And it would actually be good to make this a link. So I could make a link here. I could say a href equals um, the HTML URL is probably what I want. So I want to say like um, repo.html URL and then use the repo name like that. Yeah, so now I have links, and these are real anchors as opposed to the kind that we use when we do the internal routing. So for like, if I go to the home page, I'm using internal routing. But if I go to one of these links here, then it's going to open up a external link, like it's gonna to go to another uh, external website, right? So I have a mix. Some of my links are internal and some of them are external links. Okay, so let's take a look at this code and let's see what we can do with it. So right now our application is 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 working. It's doing exactly what I want, but we could uh, clean this up a little bit. So one thing I notice is most of this code here is doing uh, this loading, all of the loading. So here and in user, I've got a lot of code dedicated to doing this. And I wanted to show you a really neat little library called SWR, and uh, it stands for Stale While Revalidating. So it's a library that lets you uh, write code that looks like this. It's a hook where you can give an API URL and it will return to you a data object or an error object, and then you can use uh, this data to figure out what's going on in your page. So let me show you how I would use it. So this is the user page. So I'm gonna import um, use SWR from SWR. And now I'm gonna rewrite all of this code. So I no longer am gonna need a bunch of stuff here. So I'm gonna say const data and uh, error. And I'm actually gonna rename the data variable to user because the rest of my code expects something called a user. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna say data colon user. So I'm gonna receive data, but I'm gonna name it user. And I'm gonna say use SWR, and I'm gonna pass it this URL right here. Like that. So now all of this code I can get rid of. I can comment this out. So down here, I'm gonna say, if I don't have a user, it means that I'm loading. If I don't have a user, it means that I'm loading. So I'm gonna put up the loading spinner, like so. And if I have an error, then uh, we need to return h1, error and um, we could you know write some sort of better error logic here but that's it so let's see if this works i'll go home i'll go here and you can see that it does so i i'm just going to completely erase all of this code so this has gotten a lot shorter because what i'm doing now is i'm saying go download this code for me and return to me the data when it's ready. So it's dealing with all of the fetching and the promises and all of that stuff. And I'm just waiting for the data to become available. So I've been able to replace state and effect 
use effect, both of these things are gone. So you notice how I can actually eliminate these two hooks. So use SWR, what it does is it sort of replaces those two things, the logic behind loading external data, and it does some other interesting things too. Like if I go to the network, if I, let me just clear this. If I switch tabs and then come back, it will decide whether or not it needs to reload this data uh, automatically for me. And it will load this data again uh, if, I, I don't think I've reloaded this page. Hold on a second. Source user, oh, I haven't saved the page, that's wrong. Let's try this again. So I load the page. Compiling, compiling, compiling. Okay, I load the page, the data is there. I'm gonna clear my network here. I'm gonna change tabs. I'm gonna go back and you'll see that it did a fetch on this data again. And it loaded the data in again if the data had been changed, it would automatically manage it for me. So what this library does is it caches data for you and it will give you a stale version of the data, the data that's cached, while it goes and fetches the new data, which is great because it means that your program will run a lot faster. So when you go here and I go to repositories, I get my loading spinner, I go home, I go back here, it loads instantly because the data has been cached and it's saved. Let's change the uh, users. So if I go to the, um, or repos, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna delete all of this because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna get rid of my hooks and I'm gonna import the use SWR hook. And at the top of my code, I'm gonna say const data colon repo. So I'm gonna rename uh, the variable that comes back. Use, des use SWR always returns something called data, but I wanna rename it. Another way you could do this, if you don't like this, I'll show you. You could say, use SWR. Oh shoot, I need, one second. I need the URL that I just deleted. I need this. Okay, let's try that again. Get rid of this. Uh, URL equals this. Const data error equals use SWR URL. I need to get rid of these hooks. Import use SWR. Like that. And then if I wanted to, I could say const repos equals data. So if you, if you wanted to rename it like that, you could, but what I would tend to do is just do that. Like just give it a different name up here. And now I can change this and say, if I don't have the data, then show the loading spinner. And if I have an error, sorry, if not repos, and if I don't, if I have an error, then return h1 error, and we could do a nicer error here, which we can do in a second, and render everything like this. And I don't think we're using this anymore. Link is declared, but it's never read, so we don't need this. We can get rid of that. Okay, so if we refresh this, if we go to a user and then we go to the user's repositories, it loads and gives a list of uh, repositories and their languages. Go back home, we go there again. You can see how fast it is. It's instant because that data has been cached and it automatically is managing that. It's pulling up the cache data and then in the background, it goes and does another request to get that data. So you can show something to the user instantly, and then be able to um, be able to display this back again like that. Okay. So this 
This uses a bunch of third-party components like, you know, use SWR, React Bootstrap. We're using React Router. We're using a whole bunch of components in order to, to build up what looks like a full web application, but it's all being served as a single page. It's all happening as one thing. It's just that the router is taking care of doing all of the routing for me. And the components and everything that I'm that I'm working with are all bootstrap, but they've been converted into uh, something that I can use as a set of React components. What's great about, uh, you know, if you needed a React, like if you needed a charting library, something that can do charts, there's like hundreds of them, thousands of them. If you need something that could do a map, there are thousands of them, you know, Google Maps or Mapbox or like on and on and on. There's all kinds of these things. Anything that you can think of if you needed, you know, for doing I, and like date pickers, you needed a date picker. Well, somebody has written one already. And so once you understand how to how to pull these components into your repo and be able to work with them, it's amazing what you can build because, uh, you know, you don't have to build everything from scratch yourself. You can mix and match different components from other pieces and just lay out, let React manage when they display based on URLs with something like uh, the React router. Anyway, I'll pause it here and uh, encourage you to keep working your way through the notes. Make sure you understand all the techniques that are in here for working with events and rendering data, how to do routing, and how to use third-party components.